everyone. This is Dr. Rao coming to you from my office. Today I have a special guest, Jessica Garrigan, our coordinator of instructional technology with some new ideas and suggestions to support you during this remote learning time. We really appreciate the hard work that all of you are putting in into remote learning. And we understand certainly that this is new to all of us. So Jess is going to be able to help us and provide some support. So Jess, what advice do you have for teachers about remote learning? Well, hello everybody. First of all, I have to say that everyone, all of our educators have been absolutely amazing through this process. I've been amazed every single day by your ingenuity and your patience and how you've just been taking this on and learning through the process. Um, it is you, our educators, who have made the impossible possible. Um, and so that was my big learning through this process. I wasn't surprised because you're all amazing, but it has been truly remarkable um, how you've taken on this challenge. I think one of the things that we've learned the most is that connection that we made early on with our students, building those relationships, continuing those relationships has been so key um, to helping our students to engage in learning. Um, it's been tough to engage our learners. You know, they have a lot of things going on in their own lives. You have a lot of things going on in, in your lives as well. Um, and I think that the fact that you've come together and collaborated to try to figure out ways to engage our students has been our best asset as a school district. Um, in our toughest moments, you know, I've just learned through this process that I really believe that we're gonna come out of this crisis better educators than we came in. And so I think we've just continued to learn those lessons of collaboration and creativity and making sure that everyone in our system is supported. So you said imagination and creativity. So what does a great activity look like? So I have some examples here of some of the great activities that our teachers have shared with me every single day. Teachers have been sending me different ideas that they have for engaging learners. And one of the common threads is simplicity. You know, we know from our conversations with other school districts and from our own parents as well, that the more we can do on our end to manage the workload for our families, to give them really simple activities where kids are making a little video or they're interacting with text or they're doing really simple things, we find that kids are way more engaged in those tasks especially activities that involve creativity and imagination. Um, for example, one of our teachers at Lincoln, Gidget Jesus, she had her kids in her science class, or eighth grade science, design their, a mask, a protective mask for with just things they found around their home. And the kids were so engaged in that, that sort of activity because it was real world, it was relevant, it was creative and they made these quick little stop motion animation videos of their process. So we know that those sorts of activities in remote learning are gonna get us where we need to be with our students. Um, the other advice I would say is just, if something doesn't work, try something else. You know, like we have all, myself included, made mistakes through this process. Some things didn't work and we're like, oh, that, that tool didn't work or that tech tool, that app didn't work. So I'm gonna try something different. And that's, we need to continue to be okay with that as we move into whatever the next phase of this process looks like. Um, I think that the other things that I've noticed, um, you'll see over here, um, is giving kids choice. So things like choice boards and like, where we as a teacher really say, here's the standard, here's the learning I want you to get but maybe you'll make a video. Maybe you will do a drawing. Maybe you'll do a graphic organizer of your own. So giving kids those choices in how they show us what they know is really, really powerful when it comes to remote learning and any learning, even when we're in school. Kids love choice. Um, it helps to engage them. I think the best examples I've seen too, like this one up here in the corner from um, Lafayette was the teacher, uh, Adrienne Groff, asked her students to interview their parents and ask them, how do you use math in your everyday? And the, the, the kids were so amazing because they have their little like, you know, pretending that they're interviewing their parent and their parents talk about, you know, figuring out recipes and 
figuring out their budget. And so those opportunities for connection and personal relationship and involving the family have been really inspiring to me. I didn't expect that when we, we sort of um, entered into this phase of learning. So simplicity, creativity, connection, um, just making sure that those activities that we plan um, are really things that kids can do, that families can do um, without a, a lot of support because we're not there with them as we would be in our classrooms. Yes, that's so true. So, and, and you know, it worries me that some of our teachers think, oh, I have to do this perfectly well. And we know that that's not true because we're all learning this new way. So what advice do you have for teachers um, when distance teaching gets tough? I think the, the thing I told all of the teachers at the beginning of this process in that first week was that we've got to keep it in perspective. We're all doing our best and it shows that we're doing our best and our parents and our families and central office, everybody knows that we're doing our best. Um, and that that's good enough. You know, we've had to sort of adjust our expectations a little bit. Um, spending an hour working on a lesson that doesn't go okay, it's okay, it's okay. Um, that doesn't mean that we lower our expectations of our kids because they need us to hold them to high expectations, but we have to keep the reality of the situation in mind in everything that we do, both for our students and our families, but also for ourselves. Um, so I think that that has been one of the biggest challenges for an as me for me as an educator is just keeping that in mind that this is a unique situation and to have a lot of grace for myself and the people around me. Um, my other thing that I tell teachers when it gets tough is you know stick with what you're comfortable with. You know, learning technology is like a fire hose. Like there is so much information and there's so many great ideas out on social media. It can be overwhelming. So I always tell teachers to stick with the tools you know, add something new when you're ready, when you're ready to go there. Don't rush yourself. Um, of course, reach out for support. I have been amazed at how our teacher, our building teacher leaders, have been stepping up and helping their colleagues and answering texts and emails and social media posts. Um, have Everybody's just come around everybody else and supported. So I always tell, say to teachers, like, don't hide. You know, if you need support, reach out because there are so many people in our system that can help, help out with that. Um, I also think that we need to take a break. You know, I have been <laughs> challenging myself and my other, the people I work with every day, Wes and Garrett and our whole team, um, to keep, keep some boundaries around your work. Because with digital learning, like you could get text messages from kids or, you know, communication from kids at two o'clock in the morning. And we have to set some boundaries on our time to protect ourselves and our families. Um, the other thing that I just want to put out there, and this might not be a now thing, but I think we're going to move more into this, either if we're in a remote situation for, for next school year or once we come back to school, is ask your kids, ask your students for help. I know you have techie kids, you have those kids in every single class in our school district. Empowerment is all about getting our kids involved in this process. So that might mean that you share an activity out with them first, two or three kids and say, hey, can you just test this for me and give me some feedback or make sure it works for me? That will empower our kids to be involved in this process with us instead of it feeling like something we're doing to them. So I would just really encourage us to continue to figure out ways that we can empower our kids to be part of this process with us. We can do it, guys. That's a great idea, you know, for the students to see us as learners. And I think they respect us more when they see that, that we're trying and we're asking for their uh, support and help. That's great. Well, Jess, thank you so much for all of those great ideas. Uh, I agree with you. Our teachers have been working so hard. Amazing. And, yeah, amazing. And, and learning such so many new things that they've had to put in place immediately. So thank you for recognizing that too and for all of the work that you and the tech coaches are doing. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Jess, I also know that um, you have a special announcement to make. 
Um, and I thought this might be an appropriate time. So um, I, this last week, I accepted a position as the education development executive for Apple Education for the state of Pennsylvania and West Virginia. And it is heartbreaking um, because this job and working with all of you has been the greatest joy of my life, hands down. And um, it was a very difficult decision to make, but I know that if you know me, my, my vision and my goal is to reach as many kids in the world um, to help them to use technology for creativity and empowerment. And so I have taken that job. And um, so I will be transitioning um, out of my current job. But I want you to know that all of you have all of the tools and all of the knowledge that you need in order to, to continue to sustain the work that we've started here in School District of Lancaster. And on this amazing week of teacher appreciation, I couldn't be more appreciative of everything that you do and everything that you are. So I love you. I care about you very much. Um, and thank you for all that you've given to me over the last years. Thanks, Dr. Rao. Yes. Thank you. We are going to miss you too. You know, I, I know that you were born to do this and we are going to hold you accountable to make sure you're talking with us all the time and helping us all the time. We have to be first in your whole, you know, repertoire between Pennsylvania and West Virginia. Yes. I know you won't forget about us and we certainly won't forget about you. And we're very thankful for the journey you've put us on. And I know our teachers, you know, would say the same thing. So thank you. Thank you.